Okay, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to try to do a video and upload it, which is usually disastrous from here in Costa Rica. It usually doesn't work. But I'm going to try because this morning I need to talk about something pretty important. And I cannot get face, um, I can't get YouTube Live to work. <laughs> My stream keeps buffering and dropping. So that tells me that I don't have full full internet here in Costa Rica today. So I'm trying to do a live video, um, a pre-recorded video and upload. Okay, what I want to talk about today is Circle of Hope, Troubled Teen Home in, in uh, Missouri. Missouri. I don't know, wherever you're from, how you pronounce it. We always said Missouri in Louisiana. Um, it's a story that uh, has been repeated so many times. I've, I've talked to so many victims through the years of these troubled teen homes that are part of the IFB, the Independent Fundamentalist Baptist. The problem with these homes is that the um, they don't allow any kind of oversight. There's no state licensing. They don't have to go by any state regulations, nothing of the sort. They are completely exempt from all of that stuff mostly. So when that happens, you're going to have abuse. I'm sorry, it's just going to happen. The IFB has a terrible track record with their troubled teen homes, their troubled teen industry. And it's always the kids that pay the price. No one else but the kids. Um, the thing with the IFB is um, they believe that you can beat those children in submission. The allegations that are coming out about Circle of Hope are identical to everything I've been hearing about New Bethany, about Roloff Homes, about, I believe it's Bethany in uh, Mississippi, some of the homes in Florida, many other places. I keep hearing the same thing over and over again. They tend not to feed the girls, or they feed them animal feed or the lowest quality and, and smallest amounts, kind of like you might expect a certain female blogger to do. Um... They don't provide any kind of medical care. Almost all the medical care is just one of their people with a bottle of penicillin. That's it. That's why you will see things like chlamydia and other sexual abuse, sexually uh, transmitted diseases sweep through these entire communities sometimes, or even pneumonia and the like, because there's no real medical care. They don't bring the girls to the dentist. Most of the time, one of the first things they do is they pry off the girl's braces so that they don't have to keep bringing the girl into the dentist to be to have it to have the braces adjusted. They cut off almost all contact with the outside world to the parents and child. They heavily censor everything. Everything with IFB troubled teen homes is centered around controlling the girl. Toxic control, that's the only thing. And the girls at Circle of Hope are saying all of these things. They're talking of beatings, being pushed against the walls, developing UTIs from not being allowed to go to the bathroom because they were being controlled. Some of the girls are talking rape allegations and allegations of sexual abuse. Let me say something here. I am not going to play that dumb game that everybody else on YouTube plays where they use all these crazy little euphemisms for things. Let's call things by their name. I'm not monetized. I don't plan on becoming monetized because I don't want to make money off the pain of other people. I think that's really bad karma when you do that. Here's what I really want to say about child abuse. When anyone comes forward, whether it's at an IFB home or like, the poor young girl who they're fighting over her custody right now comes forward and says they're being sexually abused. Believe them. I would like to see children believed when they come forward with this stuff. Statistics show that children are the least likely to lie about that of any other age group. And if you don't believe the person who they're accusing is guilty, that's fine. Believe the child. Take time and action to make sure that the child actually is protected in all of this. Remove them from the situation or at least block the supposed abuser from them. And let the courts, CPS, and the investigators straighten it out. It's not our jobs to determine whether a child saying they're sexually abused is truthful or not. Let that fall to the experts. Let the guardian ad litem, the judge, CPS investigate 
and keep your dumb opinions to yourself. Don't be screaming them online. Which leads me to another point, a very unpleasant point. Katherine Paulson, also known as Katie Joy of Without a Crystal Ball, also known as Helga Pataki, which makes me laugh. Thank you, BX Peace Boy. Um, she started covering this Circle of Hope and several other abuse stories. I have a problem with that. Number one, she has routinely um, accused those people who've come forward, children, of not being truthful. She's accused them of being brats, of bratty behavior, of lying, being manipulated. That's not right. That's just not right. We don't make those judgments. Those are the sort of things that we have to leave the CPS, social services, and the courts to sort out. When we um, jump in and say these things about these kids, all we're doing is we're re-victimizing them. We're making what they're going through all that worse. We need to support victims, even if we don't know just what the level of victimhood is. Now, Katie's been talking a circle of hope, of talk, circle of hope, and some of the other ones, and she doesn't know anything about these things. I've covered these homes for years, and even I admit I don't know everything. I've been writing a book for the last year on a murder that took place on a girl that was in some of these homes. Some of these homes are actually a front for sex trafficking more than they are for taking care of the kids. Most of the time, it's a money-making scheme. They charge your parents quite a bit. They prey on families that don't have a lot of money and definitely don't have education. They prey on a particular subset of the country, and um, that's usually what goes on in these IFB homes. There's been so many allegations of deaths, all sorts of things. And for someone like Katie to come forward and say all this crap about victims and saying, I stand with victims, when she has actually victim-blamed other children who have come forward with sexually sexual abuse claims is just pretty disgusting. Katie does not know the IFB, the Independent Fundamentalist Baptist, which is a different kind of cult, and each IFB is a little bit different than the others. I'm pretty sure Katie doesn't even know that they only believe in King James, only Bible, that that's their big thing. Pretty sure she didn't know what the history of King James and how that Bible was written, or how the IFB came to be, or anything else. I have been... Um, educated on this by my friend Bruce Gerenzer, who has a blog, The Life and Times of Bruce Gerenzer. He's a former IFB pastor. I would suggest that you go take a look at his blog if you want to know about the IFB. There's times I've had to stop and ask him questions because even though I've had a lot of experience with those people, there's still things I don't quite always get. And that's the thing. If you're going to be writing, talking, whatever, about whatever subject, you need to be doing a whole lot of research. This is one of my big problems with Katie Joy. Why is this a problem for me? Because she does things like, um, well, example. This morning, my husband was watching Fox News. No, he's not a conservative. He likes to watch them every now and then to see what they're saying, just to see what the conservatives are believing in this week. The uh, Fox News anchor was talking about a story that she claimed was taking place in Munich about an American who had developed covid and had gone bar hopping and infected lots and lots of people that the German government is thinking about charges with this person. Well, there was just one problem for Fox News. They were showing a picture, a map of Garmisch Partenkirchen, a place I have visited many times along with Munich. It's at least a good hour drive south of Munich. That is where this took place, not Munich, but Fox was screeching out it was Munich. I am so reminded of Katie Joy's coverage of just about anything where she has partial information, rushes out, makes all these allegations. Many times they're false. She either refuses to backtrack, refuses to admit she screwed up, which I admit all the time I screw up because I'm not perfect. And uh, or else she turns around and deletes everything she said so she can pretend lie. What lie? I didn't say that. Like right now, she's trying to claim she never called Sophia a brat, which she did. I saw it. It was online. Some people, like Little Red and uh, 
Tina, I'll cut you, have copies of that video. It was said, you can't lie like that. When you just half-ass everything like she's been doing, you get so many things wrong, you mislead so many people. Just like all those dumb Fox News viewers are now thinking that Garmisch Partenkirchen and Munich are close or the same thing. And again, when you talk about sexual abuse victims, particularly children, when you talk about them like she has, you are re-victimizing the children. You're throwing doubt on their stories, which should be believed and which should be acted upon as if they are believable. Let me rephrase that, whether or not they're true or not. It takes investigation. Let's, let's stand with victims. Let's believe them. Let's say trauma is not T. Rape victims and their allegations children i mean well actually everybody i'm going to say that rape allegations are not fodder for gossip they're not fodder to make money off of we should stand against everybody who exploits victims because they're not doing any good they're not exposing anything of any length they're just harming victims that's all they're doing they're hurting other people and that needs to end that needs to end badly Okay, I have to give a shout out to M. Dolan Hickman, Mike Hickman, author of the book 1324, A Story of Faith and Obsession. Mike is a friend of mine. I adore Mike, but I did him a not solid. I should have been writing about this case weeks and weeks ago, but I came down really sick where I couldn't hardly crawl out of bed. So Mike kept spamming me these links, and I kept saying, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. Today is the day I got to it. I'm sorry it took me so long, Mike. We need to expose all of these IFB cult troubled teen homes. They're exploiting and making money and enforcing the misery. Anybody who's ever considered sending their child to one of these, please do not. Look up mental health help in your, your area. There are a lot of places in the States where there is help and hope available through through your local community services board don't give up keep looking for a solution keep looking for a way to find your way back to your child to help your child i mean really that's what our main job in parenting is is to help our children become healthy well-rounded adults it's not to beat them into submission okay Every time I say I'm never going to rant about Katie Joy again, something happens and I end up ranting about her. Oh, my goodness. In a perfect world, she would get off of YouTube and uh, concentrate on her child. But I see that we're not in a perfect world. So every time she veers into my lane and or starts talking crap about somebody in Quiverful, I'm going to call her out. And her fans that come here and spam porn links and say things to me like, you gossipy old cow. I really don't care. I'm just going to delete all you guys. Be excellent to each other. Don't put your children in these places. And I'll see you hopefully tomorrow. I hope I have better internet. <laughs> I hope the internet in Costa Rica gets better. Pura Vida.